senior from Euclid, Ohio, number 32, Pat Bianchuk. At center, a 6'8 sophomore from Bridgeport, Connecticut, number double zero, Warren Bradley. At guard, a 6'1 sophomore from New York City, number 10, Ken McFadden. And at the other guard, a 5'10 senior from Dorchester, Massachusetts, number 5, Ed Bryant. The head coach of the Cleveland State Vikings, Kevin Mackey. Now for the Rams of Virginia Commonwealth University. At forward, a 6'8 junior from Charlottesville, Virginia, number 35, Phil Stinney. At the other forward, a 6'6 junior from here in Richmond, number 12, Pete Strayhorn. Center, a 6'9 junior from Aiken, South Carolina, number 41, Alvin Robinson. At the guards for VCU, a senior who stands 5'11 from Newark, Ohio, number 10, Bruce Allen. And at the other guard, a 6'2 sophomore from Elizabeth, New Jersey, number 11, Derek McGee. The head coach of the Rams, Mike Polio. So the stage has been set here in Richmond. Mike Polio's VCU Rams against the Cleveland State Vikings. Both ball clubs have won five and lost two. The Rams are putting a four-game winning streak on the line here today. We'll be back opening tip-off in just a moment. If we're talking a pickup, what counts to you? Cash back. The financing. Then check out the new mid-sized Forward spot for VCU. Keep your eye on the mouse. Number 10, Kenny McFadden for Cleveland State. And the Vikings win the opening tip. We're underway from Richmond. This is Ramsey inside. And the shot missed. And Stenny comes up with a rebound. Good block by Alvin Robinson. He got his hand in there and deflected the ball. Allen, runner is good. And VCU opens the scoring. Bruce Allen leading VCU at over 13 points per game. Makes it 2 nothing Rams. VCU starting in a band for man. There's the mouse missing. And Stinney with a rebound. Bruce Allen at the point for VCU. His second shot of the night rims out. Allen Robinson is there. Too strong with a follow shot. And a foul inside. And this goes against Pete Strayhorn. Bob, in the early part of the season, VCU is having a lot of success in rebounding. They have beaten every opponent they played this year on the backboard, and Mike Polil is very, very confident that if he can get this game into his end of the court, that will be a big motivating factor for them in winning this game. And Cleveland State is out rebounding its opponents by over seven per game. On a drive, Ed Bryant misses. Rebound inside, and the stick back is good by Warren Bradley. And here comes that pressure. Allen beats it with a quick pass up the floor to Derek McGee. Trying to take the charge with Bryant, but no whistle. Kevin Mackey off the Cleveland State bench. The Strayhorn connects. Four to two, VCU. Interesting the VCU would open up in a man-to-man -man defense. Mike Polio was talking to us prior to the game, saying there's a good possibility they'll open man-to-man, -man, but they want to get into a zone as quickly as possible. The ad check, a walk-on. With the turnover, and VCU will get the basketball. Cleveland State, five wins and two defeats. The losses have come at Memphis State in the Big Apple NIT, 70-66. And they do not rely on that three-point shot. VCU beating the pressure, and Stenny gets it. Oh, yeah! How about the pass from Strayhorn? Great pass from Strayhorn on the breaking Stenny from the right side. Six to two, VCU off to the quick lead. Ken McFadden backs it home. The short left-hander. And that makes it 6-4. And Cleveland State now sets up the pressure. Bob, Mike Polio has a saying for this as we look at Kevin McFadden right there. Well, you see on the other side, Mike Polio, both of them just very, very active on that sideline. Mike Polio was telling us he likes a quick start after a made basket because he doesn't want Cleveland State to get set up in that press. The Rams work it up. McGee is pressured by Bryant. Here's Strayhorn. Interesting that two starters in this game are walk-ons. Strayhorn for VCU and the ad check for Cleveland State. Here's Strayhorn. 
In and out. Tipped by Robinson, though. The end check and Robinson. It's a held ball. Possession, VCU. Alvin Robinson in there. He's averaging just about six rebounds per game. Big shot blocker. Biancic does a pretty good job in there. As you said, he's one of those walk-ons going against a taller Alvin Robinson in there. Cleveland State plays a 2-3 zone when they get away from that press in their half-court defense. 6-4, VCU leading. We've played just over two minutes in our game for the Richmond Coliseum. The Rams have enjoyed great success on this floor. They've won 81% of their games here. Pushing foul against Clinton Ramsey. He is the younger brother of Kelvin Ramsey, who played at Ohio State later in the NBA. Stenny got good position on the inside in there, and there really was no opportunity for Ramsey to go anywhere. Stenny triggers to Allen. One thing we may notice about that Cleveland State defense, it may not generate turnovers and points early, but the tendency is to wear a team down. And you'll see in a few minutes, uh, they'll come back with more people. Three-pointer for Bruce Allen. He's got five, and VCU leads 9-4. Good start for the Rams. Ed Bryant works to the corner, and here's Warren Bradley. And check to the Miles McFadden. VCU doing a nice job with their defense. It's a good man-to-man -man pressure. They're sloughing, helping away from the ball. Boy, there's a great drive on the inside by Warren Bradley. 6'8", sophomore from Bridgeport, Connecticut, has his fourth point of the game. 9-6 Rams. Here comes the pressure. McGee stumbles, recovers, and kicks it over to Allen. Now Strayhorn working. Peets connects. I think Strayhorn's found a home over there. He likes that 15-foot jump shot. 11-6. The Rams on top. McFadden. Wheels and deals. Inside. And an offensive foul coming up on Warren Bradley. Alvin Robinson takes the charge, and the punishment inside as Bradley picks up his first foul. I don't think Warren Bradley was too pleased with this call right here. He felt like he was going to get to the inside, but he lowered that right shoulder. And in most cases, when you see an official pick up on that, you lower that shoulder and hit that defensive player, you're going to get a charging call, and that's what he got. The relentless pressure by Cleveland State. Allen works it up to Strayhorn. The Rams have had a week off through exams to prepare for the pressure, but it didn't help that time as Cleveland State gets the turnover, and the mouse puts it in. McFadden has scored four. It's 11 to 8. And that's the first opportunity Cleveland State's had to take that turnover and convert it to a basket. We'll kind of keep an eye on that tonight for everybody. McGee and another turnover. McFadden knocked it away from behind and up the floor it comes to Clinton Ramsey. McFadden runs over his man traveling to score. Kevin Mackey. Like a I think Kevin lion. Mack, I think he just traveled. And he didn't even <laughs> have the ball. 11 away, VCU leading Cleveland State. There's the early turnover story. Somebody had to put a pedometer on these two guys on the sideline to see how far they really do run up and down the sidelines in a game. Strayhorn gives it over to Bruce Allen. Mike Polio also telling us today that you can't relax once you get it past half court because the Cleveland State Viking defense also works pretty well underneath. There's a personal coming up, and it's on McFadden. Personal foul stopping play and a timeout on the floor with 15.43 to go in the first half. VCU leads Cleveland State. Bob Rathbun, Larry Conley at the Richmond Coliseum and the home standing Rams leading Cleveland State 11 to 8. The early field goal shooting in this game and both teams off to a hot start. Well, a lot of it obviously coming for VCU and beating that press that Cleveland State threw at them. They got a couple of shots from Strayhorn on the right-hand side. Cleveland State with a couple of layups. I'll tell you something interesting right there. Mike Polio got a little bit upset that we went to commercial at that point. But what had happened was we thought that the officials had called a foul that was not a shooting foul. In most cases, when we go to commercial, it will be a ball out of bounds and we'll come back after that. So he's somewhat upset that walking to the line now, Phil Stinney will have two shots after sitting on that bench for almost two minutes. You see that free throw percentage. Awfully low, 48%, and he nails that one, and Stenny picks up his third point of the game. If this works out, maybe uh, Mike wants to take commercial breaks all the time before his guys shoot. Phil Stenny, Sunbelt Conference sophomore of the year last year, 13 points and seven rebounds per game. Drops in good. Stenny with four, and VCU with a five-point lead. Ken McFadden. 
who never played high school basketball in New York. Addition to Clinton Ramsey, and he scores. Ramsey's first two. Here comes that 2-2-1 full court pressure. McGee gets it up to Stinney. Bruce Allen, and they're going to say that's a two-pointer. His foot was on the line on takeoff, so Allen has scored seven. Mike Polio is going to be awfully pleased the way his offense is working against that Cleveland State defense. Look at VCU now. They're in his own defense, basically a matchup. On the other side, Kelvin Ramsey is open. He's, he can get the ball in there. New man in the lineup for Cleveland State, 23, Hersey Strong. Underneath, this is Ramsey, and he dishes to Mud, and Eric's first shot of the game is rejected, and VCU's running, but they turn it over. Jump shot by Ramsey. And a foul on the rebound. And this one will go against VCU and Pete Strayhorn. Eric Mudd in the game for Coach Kevin Mackey. Mudd, a 6'8 senior from Cleveland, Ohio. As you see, coming into the game, 34, Ray Salters. What a physique on this young man from Buffalo. And Eric Mudd could be Larry Connolly going out of the game there as Clinton Ramsey. Eric Mudd could be the missing link for this Cleveland State team in returning to the NCAA tournament. Inside, Salter backs it in. That's the way to do it. Come off the bench and get a basket as soon as the ball hits your hands. More pressure for the Vikings. Well, oh, VCU doing a nice job of handling this Viking press. They move the ball well, good crisp, sharp passes, good angles on the passes. And they're having Cleveland State having a tough time trying to get that ball from VCU. Sean Hood in the ball game at point guard. A nice layup for Derek McGee. How about that break by McGee down the middle? Found the opening in that Cleveland State zone and a good pass. VCU, a sharp-looking basketball team here to start things. Good pass. Nice lay-in for Eric Mudd. Well, Mudd had a tough year, hadn't he? This may be his last game of the year, very possibly. He tore a ligament in his wrist, and it uh, needs surgery. And this is the last game he can play before gaining a medical redshirt status to be plays past tonight. This year will count against him. I asked him to practice today at the shootout how it hurt, and he said it hurts a lot when the ball hits it. McFadden lost the ball, and picking it up is Bruce Cutaway for VCU. Three on two, quickly to McGee. I want to tell you, Bruce Allen just got away with one right there because Mouse McFadden almost got his hands on that pass, but it was good, and it went in. VCU by five, but 19-14. The Rams have won four straight. Inside, here's Salters, kicking it back out. Number four is Sean Hood, the senior from Boston, Massachusetts, and Don Bosco. Yeah, the VCU zone is really packed in pretty good. Great drive right down the middle by Sean Hood. John's first basket of the game. Not the type of uh, thing you like to see in that zone. Drive it right down the middle. Here's Petwood. DCU leading by three. Allen guarded by Hood. Pretty good man-to-man -man defense by Cleveland State. Inside the ball knocked away from John Thompson, who's making his VCU debut today. And now we've got a personal foul called on John Thompson. He threw an elbow in the lane. And picks up his first foul, much to the displeasure of Mike Polian. Thompson, a 6'7 junior, playing his first game for VCU. He's a transfer from NC State. Good slab away right there. I think maybe he could have gotten caught before the ball even got there, before all three players got there. Looked like he pushed off trying to get to it. Ed Bryant back at the ball game for Sean Hood at point guard. Double zero, Warren Bradley. Cleveland State runs the players in and out. Kevin Maggie was really funny talking about John Thompson, the transfer from, from NC State coming to uh, be active today to play against him. He says, it seems like every time we play a team, they activate a player against us. Here's a nice dish off by Salter, and Eric Mudd lays it in. He's got four. And Cleveland State right back in it here, trailing by one. Well, how good would have Cleveland State have been this year if Mudd could have played all year long? You'll never know. Allen brings it up. You'll notice the patch in the Cleveland State players. That is a memory of Paul Stewart, who would have moved into a starting spot this year in his unfortunate death last April. Cleveland State doing a nice job on that man-to-man -man defense, fighting through the screens, and there's a throwaway right there by Allen. Cleveland State gets it back. 11 minutes and 54 seconds remaining in the first half. 
and a timeout has been called on the floor. So the Cleveland State Vikings right back in. 54 to play in the first half. 19-18. VCU over Cleveland State. This is the first time these two teams have met. Right, be ready. Kevin Mackey is fond of talking about his ride on the magic carpet last year. Very interesting fellow to sit and talk to. We spent uh, many minutes with him here this afternoon in their shootout. I find him to be really refreshing. Here's a drive. Salters back. Gets the bucket and a foul on Phil Stinnett. Trey Salters, 6'2", 230. Phil Stinney picking up his first personal foul, and Salters will be going to the line to try to complete the conventional three-point play. Trey Salters, when you take a look at this uh, athletic body, the vice president of the Cleveland Browns, Jim Bailey, is a big fan of Cleveland State. Says he may give Ray a tryout for the Browns. I should certainly hope so. Marty Schottenheimer would like to have this young man. He'd just be looking good on the bench in a uniform. Salters is fine. And a turnover. And well, Bryant comes up with it. Just great pressure that time by the Vikings. They had everybody covered. Quick drive to the basket. Shot by Robertson. Deflected. And VCU's got it. 21-19. There's another turnover by Cleveland State. And a 2-1-1 fast break. Bryant and Robertson. And Robertson lays it up. No good. Gets it back. Puts it in. <laughs> the younger brother of the San Antonio Spurs guard, Alvin Robertson, Kenny Robertson scores. More problems for VCU. Allen finally feeds up the floor, and Bill Stinney's got it. Three on one the other way, and Stinney misses. They fight for it, and coming out of there is Alvin Hicks. Inside, John Thompson powers in. Well, I'll tell you, that basket wasn't very pretty, but it got there. 23-21, Cleveland State. The pressure, Larry, is relentless for Cleveland State. Six VCU turnovers. You know, Kevin Mackey has a theory about that, and I think he's right. Oftentimes, it was he watched the three-point attempt, and it's good. Good shot there by Ed Bryant. He has a theory about that, that you've got to go out and put pressure on people. And if you've got good, quick athletes, even if the team you're playing against is better than you are, you're going to have the advantage because you work on that press every day. Hicks has his shot rejected. Cleveland State keeps it alive. They fight for it. And the Vikings control with Ray Salter. Here's Ed Bryant working it up. This is not a team that relies on the three-point shot, even though Bryant hit one just a moment ago. The Vikings were down by five. Now they're up by five. Ryan inside. Here's Robertson maneuvering. No, shot is no good. Cleveland State now falling back as Alvin Hicks brings it up for VCU. Over to Bruce Allen. Cleveland State's been out of that zone defense now for several minutes. They've done a good job man to man. It looks like they're going back to that zone now. Thompson. It's his own rebound. And a foul is called. And it's going to go against VCU. And Alvin Hicks looks to be the guilty party. Mike no. Polio. Man. They're going to call it against 32. I think that's John Thompson. They're going to give it against Thompson. We stand corrected. That is the second foul on John Thompson. He was a consensus high school All-America in Lawrenceville, Virginia. Thompson with two. He comes out of the game. Checking in for VCU, William Fiesel. See the foul situation. Cleveland State leading by five. Ransom. This is Bryant. Nice help that time. Coming over on the far side. Big bat. Jump shot by Ramsey. Good. Well, they're really shooting the ball well, Bob. They're getting good shots and they're canning them. 28-21. Cleveland State. Derek McGee in the middle of Bruce Allen. Shot by Strayhorn rolls off. The hand check clears to Bryant. McFadden stepped on the sideline. Not the turnover, and, and DCU will take the basketball. Mike Polio, the head coach of the Rams, is going to take a timeout here. We have 11 minutes and 56 seconds left to play in the first half, and Cleveland State with a big rush. In his fourth year as the head coach at Cleveland State, Kevin Mackey has turned the program completely around, and he's done it with the use of interchanging different pressing defenses. And earlier today, Larry Conley had a chance to talk to him about those defenses. Larry 
Conley. Had a chance to speak with Kevin Mackey earlier about the changing defenses that Cleveland State employs. They use a lot of different defenses, and here's Coach Mackey. In college, we used the 1-2-1-1 with Tom Davis and Gary Williams and backed it up with the 2-2-1 pressure. It was very good for me at Cleveland State. I, I knew that's what I wanted to do. We've uh, adapted it some more. We make it a little more kamikaze. We come at you every three or four minutes with a new body. Very difficult to simulate this in a coach's practice in 15 or 20 minutes with the second team. Well, you heard him talk about it, and they nearly pulled off the turnover. I like that term, kamikaze, because that's about what it is. You got a bunch of zeros coming at you. <laughs> Helter Skelter defense for Cleveland State. The jumper backs in good by Derek McGee. McFadden actually helped him make that shot because he adjusted it when McFadden flew by him and he arced it a little higher and it went off the glass. 28-23, Cleveland State by five. Warren Bryant pulls it out of traffic and gives to the big cheese in Cleveland, the mouse McFadden. The Ancha. Mouse is slapped over the wrists by McGee, and Derek picks up the foul. That's pretty good pressure by McGee right there. I mean, he was all over McFadden. Had he not reached in and slapped at the ball, I think he had good enough defensive position to cause him to take a bad shot, but he didn't. There's always that pressure, that, that feeling that you have to reach in and slap that basketball, and most defenders will commit that violation. Mouse McFadden leaves that one short of 76 percent foul shooter. He had 32 and a big comfort behind win for Cleveland State against St. Joe's earlier this season. The Vikings were down a dozen with 5.30 to play and won the game by five. Coming in for Cleveland State is Eric Mudd, the 6'8 senior center from Cleveland. And out goes Warren Bradley. 29-23 Cleveland State. VCU moving it up the floor. William Fizell, they work it around. Here's the jump shot by McGee. Rebound, Fizell backs it and hits it. William Good Fizell, board work. senior from Detroit. Good board work that time by VCU. 29-25 the score. Cleveland State on top. Bob, good basketball game. Both teams playing very, very well. A few turnovers. When you're playing that kind of defense, you expect to see that. Mouse missing inside. Here's the follow shot by Mudno. And VCU's got it. Here's Phil Stenny. I think the VC Rams are going to be a team to be reckoned with in the Sun Dog Conference race. I would agree with that. I think they and probably uh, Western Kentucky obviously is going to be right there. And Gene Bartos, UAB Blazer, you know they're going to be there. Inside, Fizell thought he had a hot hand, but missed that one. It went suddenly cold. Here's Ramsey firing and hitting. Nothing but net for the senior from Toledo. Ramsey was six. Now watch the press. Look how they face the players. Defensively, they try to beat them to the corners. Well, the end check is very active against the passing. Sean Hood trying to take the charge of mid floor. The one thing you've got to do against the press is don't try to beat it with the dribble. Beat it with the pass. And that's what VCU has had success with when they have beaten. Stenny shut off. And it's knocked free. Cleveland State's got it. Here's Sean Hood to McFadden. And Kent puts it in. The ball rolls loose, so Cleveland State again with a chance to set up the pressure. Look at the end check. He says, come on, get this thing in play. I'm standing here. And there is a, now the officials call time. Stinney is injured, I believe, or he's walking to the end of the bench. Maybe a contact has come loose. You see him taking a seat on the bench. The trainer's coming over to attend to him. Bruce Petway will come into the game and take a spot. I think it is a contact. So Cleveland State will be setting up the pressure, and Bruce Allen is set to throw it in. See, when VCU is able to make that second or third pass in that court, they usually beat the press. It's, they run into problems on that first or second pass. Bruce Allen. Well, Sean Hood really putting the pressure on Bruce Allen. Strayhorn is sandwiched by Salters and also Hersey Strong in the five coming up against Big Ray. His first. Six minutes to go in the first half. 
33-25, Cleveland State. Been a quick first half. Cleveland State opened up in his own defense against the out of bounds and stayed in. Trayhorn missing. Cleveland State rebounding. And Hersey Strong. Redshirt Jr. from East Cleveland, Ohio. Strong. Working on Cutwell. Goes baseline. Misses. Rebound. Eric Mutt up and in. How about that for a man who's got one and a half arms? Eric Mutt has scored six. VCU now trailing by 10. A little bit of a dangerous pass right there by VCU at midcourt. You don't ever want to turn around and throw the ball back the other way when you're that close to the line. In the back, he's scrimming for a five-second call, but didn't get it. Underneath, McGee has daylight. Nice fake. And from behind, Salters pounds him to the deck. Second foul on Ray Salters, and he got his money's worth. Well, what's, what, let's watch this hammer blow right here by Salters as he goes by. He got the fake on him right there. Ooh, I think maybe on the other side coming in. Salters got him, and uh, also maybe a little bit of Eric Mudd. Salters with a pair, and a pair of free throws for Derek McGee. McGee has scored six today. And that has doubled his career high. I don't expect much offense from Derek McGee, but he's done a fine job for Mike Polio here in the first half. You know, oftentimes you sit and watch a basketball game like this, and there really does not, no player really jumps out at you. There's nothing distinctive being done by one individual because so much is going on on the floor. It's the kind of basketball game, if you could ever define the game of basketball as a team game, this type of game probably personifies that better than any. Alvin Hicks in, number three there for VCU. And Derek McGee, who scored 12 against Morgan State last week, he is out of the game. He really forces you to utilize all the skills that you have. There's a good trap by VCU. And he's had the ball knocked out of bounds, so Cleveland State will maintain possession. A note against Cleveland State, Larry, to, to back up that point, is that they have 10 men averaging double-figure minutes. And you don't see that very often. I think that's the part of the reducing the star theory. I think Kevin Mackey likes playing a lot of people. Boy, there's another great shot by Eric Mudd. That was in heavy traffic. And handled it well despite having that uh, cast on his wrist. Ball not free, and VCU maintains possession. Kevin Mackey just did a cha-cha-cha down the side on that one. He thought he had it. There's Kevin. He is a self-proclaimed fat little street tortoise kid from Somerville, Massachusetts. He's done a whale of a job with this Viking basketball program. Petway banks it in. I tell you, Petway and Salter would be a good heavyweight boxing match. Here's McFadden, puts it in, and a foul on VCU. The Mouse has scored nine, and a free throw coming up, and the foul on Alvin Hicks. Do you think we could say that the mouse roared on that one? No, he definitely scored. 39-29, and we'll take another look on the baseline. Watch it again right here. Kevin McFadden, good move. Kind of lets the ball fall away right there, takes it up. Kind of pushes off. You know, that's the pro basketball play. Whenever you get inside like that, watch it again from up top. He kind of pushes the arm away right there of the player from VCU. He got Strayhorn, just kind of moved him aside and laid it in. Madden completes the three-point play. He has scored 10. Uh, Mouse goes out. Coming on is for the, for the uh, Cleveland State Vikings is Kenny Roberts. BC uses, uses all of their players in the, part, in the front part of the court there to try to beat this press. Cleveland State comes up trying to get some type of interception. It's tough when you've got five against four. Rams just did beat the 10-second count at midcourt. Now Bruce Allen moves VCU into its offense. Quickly inside to Robertson. VCU's having some success against Cleveland State when they run that zone defense. There's an opening in the middle. Salters, quick bounce and a quick shot for Warren Bradley and another foul against VCU. I tell you, Cleveland State gets the ball down the floor so quickly and they get into their offense and get up a shot so fast, VCU doesn't have time to turn around. Don't, don't look at the laurels and be uh, happy with the success that you got it with a basket. You better turn around and look over your shoulder because they're coming by right, right behind you. Alvin Robinson picked up the foul. That sent Warren Bradley to the line. Bradley picked up 
puts it in. He averages over eight rebounds a game. Kevin Mackey said he could be the best rebounder he's ever been associated with. Warren Bradley's from Bridgeport, Connecticut. Been on a great high school team there. Warren Harding. Rolls this one off. And Petway high to get the rebound. ECU trailing by 10. 41-41. Four-minute mark of the first half. Around to Phil Stinnett. Inside Petway. He backs and scores. Nice move by Bruce Petway. And he got it on Salter. He got good position inside, and Salter couldn't fight around him. Salters runs over his man, and Stinney takes the charge. And Salters now with three fouls. Taking a charge on Ray Salters is like taking a charge on a freight train. Time out on the floor. 3.39 to go in the half. Kevin Mackey's Cleveland State Vikings leading VCU by eight. We give 110%. <laughs> so does V-Stick antiperspirant. Why? Nothing fights. You deserve national attention from National Car Rental. Call 1-800-CAR-RENT. National Car Rental. The Richmond Coliseum in Richmond, Virginia, and here's the charge by Salters. And Salters headed for the bench with that third foul. It was a good position on the inside there by uh, Phil Stenney to, to draw that charge. Bob, you and I were talking while we were away just a few minutes ago about the way they are handling their offense. Cleveland State has a reputation of taking a lot of turnovers and converting them to baskets. But what they're showing you here tonight on ESPN is the fact that they're able to get the basketball against VCU, get up the floor quickly, get into their half-court game, and in two or three passes, get a good shot off. Why do you want to make eight or nine passes and get the same shot 30 seconds later? That's the way Kevin Mackey coaches. He loves to get the ball up the floor, get it in the hands of the right shooters, and get it on the board. Another point, too, is Cleveland State is blessed with so many great one-on-one -on -one players. And they're able to isolate and, and use their offensive moves to their best advantage. Bill Stinney showing off his moves and scores. Stinney has scored six. The crowd trying to become a factor here in Richmond. VCU now back into that man-to-man -man defense in Cleveland State looking for an opportunity to get inside. Bradley. Up top, this is Ed Bryant. And that's a three-pointer. Ed Bryant hadn't shot a three-pointer all season. He's hit two today. That was an opportune time to can one because VCU was getting back in this game. 44-35, Cleveland State. No help. No help. They're going to get it. Just over the 10-second line in time. Robinson to Petway. Oh, it up and in by Alvin Hicks. They're going to take it away. Mike Polio cannot believe the call. And I think he's telling the official about it. Now he's letting Nate Humphrey know what he thinks. Let's watch Alvin Watch Alvin Hicks come here on the right side of the screen. He'll follow this basketball. He goes right up over the back right there of the Cleveland State player. Take the basket away. And it, boy, that really hurt Mike Polio. There was a foul on VCU, and I believe it was on Alvin Robinson. Uh, perhaps Hicks for coming on the back. Nonetheless, Bradley misses the free throw. And VCU brings it up. Kenny Robertson guarding Bruce Allen. Here's Hicks trying to get the bucket back and does. First two for Alvin Hicks, the Richmond native. Cleveland State driving. Here's Ramsey going in, taking away, and Bruce Allen comes up with it. The Rams are running. Allen nil. There's a loose ball. Picked up by Petway. Well, those green shirts are everywhere. I think they've got about seven or eight guys on the floor, Larry, instead of just five. <laughs> They're everywhere. Swarming. 44-37. Cleveland State on top. Steady driving. Banking, missing, and a foul coming up. I think he's going to go against Warren Bradley, and I think maybe he just kind of pushed him in the stomach as Denny started across the lane. Warren
Warren Bradley picks up his second foul. And Phil Stinney will be going to the line. Phil coming on strong last year in the Sun Dog Conference had a streak of 18 consecutive double-figure games. The Mouse, Ken McFadden coming back in for Cleveland State. And taking a seat, Kenny Robertson. Kenny's brother Alvin playing in the NBA at San Antonio right now. Bill Stinney is running. He's two of three from the line today. Earlier this season, a big rebounding game against UNCC in a non-conference game in Hawaii. 16 boards for Stinney. He goes one for two at the line, and the Rams are trailing by six. Good basketball game. Very entertaining. Both teams playing very, very hard. Good pass. Inside. Here's a back and score. And let's see if they count the bucket. The foul will be on Eric Mudd. The question is, will the bucket count? And no basket. Here's the replay. You know, that's an interesting pass right there. You see McFadden get the ball to Eric Mudd down low and take it straight into the basket. The official right there with a hand behind the neck. That's the automatic charging call. Kevin Mackey works on that pass Here in practice. Here comes right at us. And the Rams throw it away. Well, right that was away. good hands. Man, I'm diving under the table. What are you talking about? Here's Bryant. And coming in for VCU, Derek McGee. I think it is the accumulative effect of the press that works against you. Well, there's a combination of factors. One is you create an intimidating factor by you having that defense. Oh, look at that move right there. Ed Bryant with a beautiful move to the inside. Outstanding. Bryant has scored eight. 46-38. McGee's in trouble. Finally gets it into Stinney. Gets it back. And the worst thing you can do here is pick up your dribble. They're waiting for the trap. Ralph Robertson's hands. And Cleveland State's got it. And Ed Bryant brings it up. Petway takes it away. Here's Phil Stinney working with McGee. Derek McGee puts it in. But all forwards and centers want to handle the fast break. 6'8", Phil Stinney out there all by himself. Had no choice. He had to take it. 46-40. Shot clock is off. Cleveland State will take the last shot of the hand. coaching move by Kevin Mackey. Make sure you get the last shot. He's going to walk out here with the lead at halftime. Driving, faking, missing. Petway falls out of bounds. A push will be coming up against Cleveland State with three seconds to go. The push against Clinton Ramsey. So VCU will get some points. Larry, you talk about the best laid plans of mice and men. Cleveland State works for the last shot. Not only do they not score, but they foul and give VCU the opportunity. You know, I think Ramsey felt like he, he was. He got hacked right there. Phil Stinney got him across the arm. Then he got frustrated, took out his frustration, and committed a foul on the other side. And now VCU could walk down to the other end, can two free throws, and knock off two points of that deficit. For VCU, Bruce Petway. Will be going to the line, a 63% shooter this year. Misses. Cleveland State intercepted at the buzzer. It will not count. So it's halftime with the Cleveland State Vikings up by six. Thank you, Bob Rathman. We'll be getting back for the second continue. Did you see this story about social 46 to 40, but there's a game tonight at the Knight Center in Miami, Florida. Tito Horford is playing. Let's check in now live with Ken Stibler and good buddy Tom Meese. Horford in the game as Miami is taking on Dartmouth. Tom? Welcome to the James L. Knight Center in Miami, Florida. I'm Tom Meese with Ken Stibler. That's our score midway through the first half. Dartmouth 18, Miami 12. Tito Horford is debut tonight. He is on the bench right now. In the game, Horford so far has four points. There's Tito. 
His first two points came on a humongous slam dunk. His second two points were at a little turnaround jump shot. Horford uh, has been very impressive, I think, tonight, Ken, especially on the backboard more than anywhere else. Well, he's been taking it off and clearing the boards and giving Miami the opportunity to run a fast break. Horford also has an assist. And uh, also six shots have been altered by Tito's presence in the lane. So he has been a presence tonight. However, Dartmouth is leading the struggling Miami team 18 to 12. A lot of was expected of the Hurricanes this year, coming off a 14-14 year in their first year last season. But they're off to a one and four start, and this is the cornerstone game with Duke coming in here Monday night. That's your setup. Here's Joel Warren, the sophomore out of Miami. And Miami's back within four at 18 to 14. It's nice to see Joel hit that shot, too. He rattled that one around, but they dropped. That was a three-pointer, 18 to 15. Warren was just outside the three-point line. Ryan Randall gets it over to Dartmouth outside expert Jim Horton. And a whistle and a double dribble is called by the official turnover. Now Miami's got a shot to get as close as they've been in an awfully long time. 18 to 15, Dartmouth on top. Thank you, Tom. Tito is on the bench. We will be getting back to that game watching Dartmouth and Miami. Most importantly, seeing Tito Horford, who tried Houston, tried LSU, then thought about, well, Kentucky and Louisville and UCLA. They didn't want him. Tried Houston again and then signed with Miami. Had to complete two semesters of schoolwork and has done so. Let's move on as to what happened with other scores today. Donald Royal did not play for Notre Dame. He was out the leading rebounder, the leading scorer for the Irish. Valparaiso came into the Athletic and Convocation Center. Scott Anslem with a three-pointer ties the game at eight for Valparaiso, but the Irish take control. David Rivers fakes the J and then takes the shot. Irish up by eight. It was all Irish in the second half. Scotty Hicks to Jackson, Jameer Jackson. 51 to 38 and the foul and the Irish continuing to roll for Coach Phelps. Rivers missing here. Well, watch Scott Hicks tip it in. As Hicks had 13 points, the Irish win it 63 to 50. Other scores today earlier on ESPN, it was Southern Miss rolling past North Texas State. Derek Hamilton had 16. Xavier moved to 5 and 4 with a win over Miami of Ohio. Byron Larkin and Stan Kimbrough each had 20 in that game. George Mason easily passed Radford. Brian Miller had 4 for 5 from three-point country. Michigan is now 7 and 2. The Wolverines beat Northern Michigan. Rhode Island blows out Stonehill. Jim Christian had 25. Bradley on another Last second shot by Hersey Hawkins. He made a career of this last year. Hawkins is now a junior. He had a three-pointer at the buzzer. This kid is incredible. Bradley beats Marquette 73-70. Our game's at the half. The visiting Vikings have the lead on the VCU Rams. We'll get back to Richmond after this. No more settled for a Commonwealth. Brought to you by McDonald's. It's a good time for the great taste of McDonald's. We'll be getting back to Richmond in just a second. Some more scores to check. A final in from Big Five Basketball. This could be John Cheney's best team at Temple. 67-65 in overtime, beating Villanova. Some other scores from this afternoon. Lafayette, a winner over... Uh, Manhattan in that game. Otis Ellis had a career-high 32, and UTSA beat Baylor 85-83. to We've got a six-point game at halftime. We could be checking in again live in Miami, so stay with us. Now back to Bob Rathbun. Bob? The Richmond Coliseum in Richmond, Virginia, and the Cleveland State Vikings leading the VCU Rams by a 46-40 to score. And Larry Conley, a first half that was back and forth, as the score would certainly indicate, a lot of pressing and running by both ball clubs. It seemed as though VCU was able to handle the pressure early in the game, but then the second half of that first half, Cleveland State got to turn it around, and now they lead by six. Well, Bob, I think what happens is, uh, because of the way Kevin Mackey coaches, you keep running those different players in and out. We see so many different combos combinations of players coming in and out of there it really gives those guys a little bit of a breather so it gives them a chance to get that press going outstanding shooting by the two teams Cleveland State at 59 percent VCU matched that in the first half from the free throw line Cleveland State at 57 percent VCU just a touch better five out of seven for 71 percent the rebounding the three-point shooting has been perfect Cleveland State's two by Eddie Bryant and VCU's by Bruce Allen rebounding VCU's favor 16 to 10 and here's the big stat, turnovers. VCU with 10 and Cleveland State with 8. 18 turnovers in the first half. A little surprising. I thought maybe VCU had a lot more than that. Here's the steals. You see Cleveland State with 7. So 
VCU had 10 turnovers, seven of them by Cleveland State Steelers. But also, you know, there's a benefit to that press that we'll talk a little bit about in the second half as we look at the scoring. Mouse McFadden with 10 to lead the way for Cleveland State. There's Robertson and Hood riding out the Vikings scoring. And for the VCU Rams, Derek McGee, the leader in the first half. He had 10. Allen with seven, so a productive backcourt for Mike Polio's club tonight. Stinney with seven. Strayhorn, Petway, and Hicks. Here's the head man of the Rams, Mike Polio. You know, when you're looking at those stats, Bob, it's very obvious Cleveland State had eight different players score in the first half. And 10 men played. In fact, uh, five men with double-figure minutes in that first half and four more with eight. So Kevin Mackey runs them in and out. And it's an exciting style of basketball. It's one of the few games I've seen this year, too, where we've only got two officials. Most of the time, we've got three. So we start the second half. Cleveland State in green, VCU in white. And the Vikings attack with Ed Bryant. The ant check rejected, and a foul is called. Stinney got him with the body. Phil's second foul. Bob, a good technique that Cleveland State uses in their passing. Watch this low pass. This is the end of it right here. You see Vianchek making a good move to the inside. Stinney got him right on the elbow as he went in. Good block by Robinson and good help. But, but they make that bounce pass very low, and it forces the offensive player to get down low to pick up the pass, and it makes it more difficult for the defender to come in and try to intercept that pass. Anything that comes in low like that is better for the offensive player than it is for the defensive player. Lots of times here in the second half, you'll see Cleveland State utilize that type of pass. Good point. The Anchek has his first two points of the game. Cleveland State with the pressure. VCU's Derek McGee gets it over to Bruce Allen. Nearly a pickoff there for Clinton Ramsey. It's almost like Alvin Robinson said, don't throw it to me. I don't want to touch it. <laughs> Here's Bruce Allen moving toward the corner. Ken McFadden He's comes up to guard him. Turn around yeah. is good over Bradley. You well, we can see that one coming. Yeah, we talked about that at the top of the show. And VCU's going to have success. They've got to get the ball to Stinney on the inside. That time they did. Good move to Bryant. Look at that move. Left it just short. And Derek McGee with the personal. The sophomore from Elizabeth High School in Elizabeth, New Jersey. And Derek McGee pleading innocence right there. Mike Polio praying to someone. And that's how you make your living, Mike. <laughs> Ed Bryant to the free throw line. Clutch shooter for Cleveland State. He's got two throws coming. First no good. His situation with Sean Hood is sort of a Wally Pip, Lou Gehrig thing. Bryant had uh, been uh, moved into the lineup when Hood got hurt. Hood had been starting right along at Cleveland State. Bryant's been starting the last two years. Now Hood exclusively off the bench. 49 to 42. Cleveland State leading. Good point right here. Uh, Bruce Allen was told by the official he could run the baseline. Good steal. Oh, what a pass. Beautiful pass by Viancic. Boy, Viancic made a great pass that, side, that time on the steal. They Ram got him in the corner. Ramsey got the basket. McGee having trouble breathing, and he finally gets it over to Stinney. They are right in your shirt. Here's Stinney. Now to Bruce Allen. Where do you get to the point where you start looking over your shoulder waiting for oh, the there, double team? Yeah, absolutely. There's no question. It, it really is an intimidating factor. You know, you talk about the big guy. Oftentimes, when you've got a very quick team that comes out and presses, you have a tendency to look over your shoulder. You get very concerned about handling the basketball. Outside, McGee missing. Rebounding, Robinson missing. And Cleveland State's Miles McFadden clears. The Vikings run. McFadden, oh, yeah. the end check. Rejected by Robinson and a foul on Alvin Robinson. I want you to notice how McFadden draws players. There were eight guys around him. Look at this. White shirts, four white shirts right there, and he throws it to the other side. Just an outstanding move right there, and a great pass by Mouse McFadden. And then even better move by Biancic to stay alive. <laughs> well, he really was bounded by Robinson, and Biancic will go to the line. He's a senior. Walked on last year at Cleveland State. He'll get a scholarship next semester. One, gentlemen. One, 
been to a couple of junior colleges. In fact, coached the freshman team at Lakeland, Ohio Junior College. Wants to be a coach. Four points for Pat Viancic. 53-42, Cleveland State, more pressure. That way, up the floor to Phil Stinnett. McGee. Here's Stinney with a jump shot. Fights for the rebound. Coming up with it is Warren Bradley for Cleveland State. And the Vikings, Coach Mackey terms this the run and stun defense. And now offensively, here's a miss by Ramsey. Cleveland State breaks a man down the floor, and McFadden knocks it away. McGee on the quick break. 17.57 to play in the second hand. Vikings by 11. Sometimes that's a good idea. Even if it doesn't work and it gets slapped away, it kind of puts that thought in the defense at Cleveland State. In their mind, there's a chance they could be run out on, and therefore they open it up a little bit up, up front so that they can make better passes up front. Got to take that shot. Phil Stinning. Now Bruce Allen working out front. McGee nearly had it taken away. Derrick in double figures tonight. Outside, Allen, three-pointer. He's good. His second home run shot of the game. Allen has scored 10. 53-45, Cleveland State. TCU just keeps hanging around. You know, Cleveland State is on the verge of blowing them out a couple of times in the first half, and they keep coming back. There's that pass again. You see McFadden lower it. The south ball banks and misses. Rebound to Petway. Long down floor to McGee. Controls it and puts it in. And there it is again. They got the run out that time and got it over the Cleveland State guards. They got the basket. Now they're within six. And Bryant works it up. The crowd getting into the game. On the cut, here's McFadden. The mouse puts it off. No good. The end check the offensive board. Rejected by Cutway out of bounds. Mackey wanted the goal 10. Didn't get it. A fly swat block inside by Petway. Watch Petway go up. It's a good call. That ball was still heading up. My goodness, that might be the longest rejection in the history of college basketball. <laughs> Watch this one again. He didn't just reject it. He threw it into the next county. That almost hit the concessionaire walking down the aisle. He almost had cotton candy on the ball. <laughs> McFadden. Into the ball game, Hersey Strong, number 23. Up top, Sean Hood. McFadden with a low bounce, but this time Bradley unable to handle it. VCU making a run. Allen, wide open is McGee. Good work that time by VCU. A delayed break. If they don't get the initial basket or the good pass, they work on that screen, and that time they got McGee in the corner. 16-minute mark of the second half. 53-49 Cleveland State. The Rams are back here in the Richmond Coliseum. Driving is Ransom. Unorthodox, but an offensive board and out of bounds to Cleveland State. Bradley worked it back up and had it knocked away. There's a timeout on the floor with 15.46 to go in the half, and the Rams are on the comeback trail. Shootout. Oregon State got off to a fast start. Watch them collide with California Sunday night on ESPN. Fifteen forty-six remaining here in the Richmond Coliseum. Bob Rathbun along with Larry Conley. 53-49. to Cleveland State leading VCU. You see the shooting in the second half. The Rams trailing by six at the half. Now down by four. They have picked up three fouls, though, in the process. Cleveland, Cleveland State standing on the floor waiting for VCU to come out of that huddle. Bissell's had to go in and get them out of there. DC with the basket, uh, rather uh, Cleveland State with the basketball. Sean Hood, number four there, ready to throw it in. And inside it goes to Ray Salters. Now back up front to Sean Hood. Yeah, BC is going to stay in what looks like a matchup zone defense. McFadden, baseline. Mercy Strong, up and off. Here is a follow by Eric Mudd. No, and a foul is called. And this one on Bruce Putwood. And the Birmingham, Alabama, Jr. Picking up 
number one. Well, Mike Polio trying to build a better mousetrap here. McFadden scored 10 in the first half, hasn't scored in the second half. And you see Cleveland State, they're aggressive on the boards. Pretty good move right there. Harry Mudd with a strong rebound. <laughs> Missed the free throw. That's tough. He has scored eight in this game and a 75% shooter. Puts this one in. 54-49. Cleveland State by five. Bill Stinney, two on two, working with McGee. Stinney backs it home. How about that? Behind the back, cross the lane, shoot it over the top of somebody and bank it in. Nothing to it. <laughs> Stinney's got 11. The Rams within three. Salters gets his own board. Falling away, puts it in. Will it count? Well, check and see. Salters wanting that basket. That is called seat of the pants offense. It's going to be called holding right here. Watch Salters go after his own rebound. Good move right there. There was the foul committed coming down on the rebound. You can see the official waving the basket off even before he went to the scorer's table. That's a pretty good call. He got him coming down. John Thompson committed his third and goes to the bench. ECU just about set to put VC Cleveland State in the one and one and Salters scored. How about that low pass? Did you see how low it came in from out of bounds? Salters with a good grab, stuck it in. Out of the double team, Stinney clears. Now up the floor it comes to McGee. Side steps Hood, whips it over to Petway. Count it. Ray Salters with number four. How about Derek McGee, number 11? Look at this pass, blind side, whip it to the left. Good play to the inside. Petway with a basket, he'll go to the line. That was an excellent play by Derek McGee, a great pass. Larry, he is really coming on strong. McGee, as Salters goes out with his fourth personal. McGee has scored 14 today. You just saw that dandy pass. And here's a man who really was not much of a factor as a freshman for VCU. Now it is Petway's turn, center stage, and he'll look for his seventh point here. You know, VCU's in the midst of a seven-game homestand. This is their fourth game here in Richmond. They've got three more after this one. Kevin Mackey right there played six of his last eight games on the road. He'll be glad to get home tomorrow. Pressure by VCU. Raven State bringing it up. Sean Hood right to the basket. He puts it in, and it's an offensive foul on Hood. No basket. Kevin Mackey is beside himself on the Cleveland State bench. Well, there's no question about Hood being out of control right there. I thought Robinson might have been stepping in a little bit right at the end, but they saw it the other way. Watch it again. Watch Robinson 41. Did he move? I don't know. I thought maybe he might have been moving. Back to live action. Derek McGee gives to Bruce Allen. 56 54. Doesn't really make any difference, does it? 14 <laughs> 30 remaining in the game. Well, good chance for VCU now to really make a run. Robinson had a chance to tie. Strayhorn picks it up and puts it in. I don't know what kind of shot it was because he didn't have very good control of it, but he got it up and in, and we got a tie. Six aside with 14 minutes to play in Richmond, Virginia. Eric Mudd against Stinney. Bruce Allen. Stinney lost it to the wing, and McGee has it. Quickly, here is Strayhorn. VCU takes the lead at 58 56. Oh, they love it in Richmond. VCU back into that matchup zone defense. It appeared early in the second half that Cleveland State was going to blow the Rams out of their own building. Mud missing. And Bruce Allen has. It has been all VCU in the last three minutes. Cleveland State has really cooled off. A basket here could really hurt them. Might be time for a timeout by Cleveland State. Working against Sean Hood. <laughs> 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 
quick pass to Robinson. Back out, McGee got a finger on it to keep it in bounds. The shot clock at 13 seconds. Beats Strayhorn. Allen's going to put it up. Three-pointer. Missed it. Mud the rebound. And Strayhorn throws it right back into Eric Mudd. McFadden. Oh, what Left a shot. And runner is good. Oh, what a shot. The Mouse has a dozen. Now we got a loose ball and time called, and the subs are coming in. Well, Kevin Mackey wanted to make sure he got all those substitutes in there. I think a couple of his guys were breathing pretty hard out there. He ran up to that scores table and says, push that horn. I want these guys in. Now VCU brings it up. A tie game with 12-10 to play. Bill Stinney on the cut to Petwell. He scores and a foul on Clinton Ramsey. Good two-man basketball being exhibited right there. Bill Stinney, Bruce Petway. Got it in the middle, got it down inside, and he made it. Got a chance for a three-point play. Watch Stinney. Good look, quick pass. Petway with a strong move. Larry, I've been very impressed with the way VCU has seized control of this basketball game. They're doing a good job of passing the basketball, and that's what you've got to do against a pressing, swarming defense. You've got to move the basketball with quick passes. Headway missing the free shot. Now the question becomes, with 12 minutes to go, can the Rams keep it up the rest of the way? They're trying to pick it up, but they do. Here's Bruce Allen. Four on two, Ram break. McGee missing. Petway had it knocked out of his hands and out of bounds. Timeout on the floor. 11 minutes and 46 seconds to play, and the VCU Rams lead the Cleveland State Bucks by two. Sunbelt back last season, four Sunbelt teams won 20 games and went to the NCAA, and three of the four won first-round games. A fantastic season a year ago in the Sunbelt Conference. Here's the move of the night, Larry. Watch Mouse McFadden right here with this semi-halfway, I don't know what kind of hook shot it is. All I know is he put it up over his head and got it in. Perfected at the lower east side, no doubt. 60-58 is the score. VCU is leading Cleveland State by two. 11.46 to play. You see the Rams breaking away from head coach Mike Polio and the staff. I'll tell you what, there's any time of the year you can walk down that Lower East Side, you'll see some of the greatest basketball talent you'll see in the entire world down there playing. No some, doubt about some it. Some of those guys are 40 years old and still playing. Can we talk about the Mouse, who didn't play high school basketball, but did play AAU ball for the Madison Square, Madison Square Boys Club, had 45 on the Pearl one game. Here's a shot by Strayhorn. It's tipped out now to McGee. Shot, that way, good. Well, I'll tell you, Petway better buy Christmas dinner for Stinney because he is keeping him in, in baskets. Tremendous pass by Stinney again to Petway. Taking advantage of the defensive attention being given Phil Stinney. Bad pass. Inside, Stinney has it. The ant check comes from the blind side and steals it. Nice pass. Inside, Ramsey scores. Only way he could get it there was the bounce pass, and he got it there. 62-60, the score. And now an offensive foul on McGee as Kenny Robertson took the charge. That'll be the third foul on Derek McGee. Occasionally you get out of control, and right here Derek McGee is completely out of control. He just simply ran right over the top of Kenny Robertson. So McGee working inside. Here's a deflected ball, but Cleveland State's got it. Nice bounce to the end. Jack fumbles, recovers, and scores. On that one play, we had four steals. <laughs> it went one way back, then the other way, and the Vientek picked it up and laid it in. It's been that kind of night. Incredible sets of hands on these players out here. Very quick. Stenny had it knocked away. Petway, a whirling dervish. And Strayhorn. I've seen shots go in tonight in various ways that I've never seen in college basketball. 64-62 VCU. Long bomb for Ramsey. Two-point shot. That was too easy. The conventional way, a pass and a shot. Cleveland State with the 1-2-2 two, 
two full court zone pressure. There's the trap on Strayhorn. Allen gets it over to Petway. Nice job of faking by Petway, and he banks it in. Rams by two. Yeah, sometimes you almost get the feeling the way these two clubs are playing is, okay, you go ahead and score because we want to get it back and show you what we can do. Robinson missing. Rebound, Ramsey. He'll put it up. Wide of the mark. Cleveland State ball. Right off Stinney's hand. Head coach Mike Polio making a couple of changes here. 32, John Thompson, the transfer from NC State is in. Stinney and McGee going to the bench. give Mike Polio credit. He is also utilizing his players off the bench and giving them a little bit of a breather, much like Cleveland State does. Ramsey picks up the loose ball and puts it in. Clinton has scored 14. Tie game at 66. 9.30 to play. Here is Hicks missing. Robinson gets it over to Strayhorn. He scores and he's found. The guilty party, Warren Bradley, number three. Basketball is taking some strange bounces tonight. It seems to be going everywhere. I mean, there were eight guys underneath that basket under there, and the furthest away was Strayhorn, and he came up with it. Here's Viancic. Watch it again. Look, there are eight guys around the basket. Who comes over with it? Strayhorn. <laughs> three hands. Three sets of hands touched that ball before it got to him. Pete Strayhorn with a dozen today. Make it 13. This season high is 18 against George Mason. Yeah, I've always thought the one statistic they don't keep in basketball that may be the most relevant of all are loose balls. How many times you come up with loose balls? A whistle and a foul against DCU. Bruce Allen caught for the push. Much to the displeasure of Mr. Polio. The mouse back in, Ken McFadden. And going out is Kenny Robertson. Ed Bryant will be going to the line. What a night. He's one out of two. But I got to say to this point, these two officials have done an outstanding job in this basketball. This has not been an easy game oh. for the Look, when you got guys going this fast up and down the floor, pressing, playing hard defense, and going to the glass the way they are, I think they've done an outstanding job here. George Demos and Nat Humphrey in the striped shirts tonight. Bryant looking for point number 11. Now VCU sets up against this Cleveland State zone press. Get it into Hicks. Get it back to the middle of the floor. Keep the ball in the middle of the floor. Get it back to the middle. Hicks gets it over to Strayhorn. Alvin Hicks, a newcomer to VCU. He's a Richmond native, went to Jefferson Huguenot with. Here's a runner by Allen Bisson. Strayhorn keeps it alive. He fires back and hits. Where did they find Strayhorn? Mm. I'll tell you what, he is some kind of player. Mike Polio found him playing summer basketball here at VCU. This past summer, invited him out to the team, and he starts tonight. And he scored 15 points. McFadden dribbled it off the player's leg, and now VCU's running. Here's John Thompson. Barrels in. Up the short. And a foul call. I think that was an ill-advised move by John Thompson. He should have given that ball up. He had the opportunity to take it down in there, give it to a guard, and then get it back. Instead, he wanted to play guard and didn't do it very well. Thompson picking up the foul and going out of the game. Phil Stinney back in for the Rams. 71-68, VCU leading with 8.24 to play in the game. And to the free throw line for Cleveland State, it will be 6'8 sophomore Warren Bradley. Missing the front end. And Petway has done a fine job tonight for VCU. Coming up on the rebound. Cleveland State working out of a double stack. Boy, is Brian ever putting pressure on him. Petway, fade away. Stinney missed the tip. And Mud clears. The mouse. Sneak it in. Puts it up and off. And a blocking foul on Derek McGee. 
I'll tell you what, it's tough to stay with a mouse when he's darting around the floor. Watch it again. McFadden, good move baseline right there. He's trying to get inside. McGee was moving. It's a good call by the official. You've got to have both feet planted. Derek McGee picking up his fourth foul, but he'll stay in the game. And the mouse stepping up at the line. Kevin Mackey said when he recruited Ken McFadden and all the talents that this young man has, he said it was like finding a Picasso in the attic. <laughs> he's got 13. Well, he's got as good a stroke as Picasso, I can tell you, but it's left-handed and it goes to the rim. 14 for the mouse. Seven minutes and 59 seconds remaining in the game, and a timeout on the floor. This has been a dandy. It's 71 to 70, VCU leading Cleveland State, and we'll be right back. Madeline Kahn on having it all. What is this fascination we have with having? Travel arrangements made through Eastern. Whether you're traveling to New York's Kennedy, Newark, or LaGuardia Airport, Eastern has a convenient flight going your way. Come fly with Eastern. The Richmond Coliseum in Richmond, Virginia. Bob Rathbun along with Larry Conley. Sunbelt fact, past five years, 43 players drafted in the NBA. Last year's player of the year, Kenny Gannison with the Phoenix Suns. You know, Bob, if I were sitting at home watching this basketball game, I believe I would be about as entertained as I could possibly be. Not because we're doing the game, <laughs> but simply because I think these players are playing extremely well in December. They're two very talented clubs. VCU, obviously a team that's going to come on and play well in the Sun Belt. I think Cleveland State, even without Eric Mudd, who's probably the best player they've got on this club, is going to end up having a darn good year. They've got good talent, and the way Kevin Mackey plays, the way he coaches, I think they're just going to have a great year. And here's a steal. McFadden driving and scores. VCU now trailing by one, 72-71. It has been fast-paced. It has been hectic. It has been frantic, but most enjoyable. 72-71 and Cleveland State. Cleveland State changes defenses. VCU recognizes. They go to Strayhorn, who's been the, the big guy for them. And Pat Vianchek with his first personal foul. It was, good, it was a good offensive transition right there. They recognized the man-to-man uh, -man defense, and they immediately went to Strayhorn and posted up Vianchek on the inside. Now he's got two free throws. Could put VCU back in the lead. Strayhorn enrolled at VCU last year. He had played previously Division III basketball at Christopher Newport College in Newport News, Virginia. Here's Clinton Ramsey into the game. And Pat Vianchek goes out. His brother... Mike Strayhorn was a standout at William & Mary. 17 for P, one away from a season high. And VCU's got the lead back. Coming into the game for VCU will be Lionel Bacon. The freshman from Louisville. All right, now VCU just keep Cleveland State some of its own medicine. That's a pretty decent press right there. They slowed it down. Cleveland State now going into their half-court game, and VCU falls back into a 2-3 zone. McFadden. And the works it up top. Here's Sean Hood with some daylight. McFadden bumped by Stinney. Rims it out. Cut away the rebound. You know, he almost looks like he shot pitch that ball. He doesn't have a good shot. It doesn't look good, but it goes in. Seems to be a push shot. Here's Hicks trying to throw it up there. McFadden was faked out and came down on his back. Take another look at it here. Well, the mouse was flying here. Is there a flying mouse? <laughs> Got him right on the back. McFadden, second foul. Just under seven minutes to play in the game. 73-72 is the score. VCU leading by one. That's just a sixth team foul by Cleveland State. Interesting, they pressed the whole ball game, and in the second half, that's only their sixth foul. Stinnett, dead in. Cleveland State really has to come up and confront Stinnett. They can't allow him to take that shot there. He's too good for that range. Rams by three. Skip pass to Sean Hood. 
There's McFadden, near steal, and they do come up with it. Strayhorn up the floor to Bruce Allen. He scores! And a foul on Warren Bradley. That may very well be... Oh, they're going to say one shot. Thought for a moment they may call this intentional. Good move by Allen here. He went for the ball. They're going to give it to him. They're going to say he went for the ball, and I think they're probably right. Warren Bradley committing the foul. It was a good dish that time. Good throw out. It was Strayhorn who came up with it, and he just threw it out there and let Allen run it down. Warren Bradley going out of the game with his fourth foul. Bruce Allen to shoot one shot. Allen, who blossomed as a junior. Here's a look at the foul trouble. McGee with four, and he had scored 14 before he took the seat on the bench. Allen missing the free throw. And Eric Mudd pulls it down for, these, for uh, Cleveland State. You don't find too many guards shooting just above 50% from the free throw line. The end check missing, hits rebound. VCU running. Here's Mr. Bruce Allen on a skinny. Lost it, got it back. The end check the rebound. Here's the mouse. Nice spin move. Gets it out to Ramsey. Missing. Rebound to the corner and cut work. And Bruce Allen doing the wise thing here. He's just going to walk it up, try to catch his breath, and set something up with 535 to play. I think he needs to catch his breath. Goes down. Held ball. Possession VCU. to play. And DCU leads Kevin Mackey's bunch by five. Well, Bruce Allen's really upset and he's telling the officials, hey, the guy blocked me. He wouldn't let me back. Ed Bryant with good defensive position that time. You know, all three of these guys, Bryant, Hood, McFadden, all very, very quick. And Ken Robertson, all of those guys out front make it very hard on you to try to get the ball up and get it in position to run your offense. Here's a steal by Mouse McFadden. And Cleveland State is within three. I'll tell you another aspect of, of pressing that's important, Bob. You have to be able to anticipate. And this club does a good job of anticipating where the pass is going to go. McFadden, they've got Stinney pinned. But now the Rams clear, and here's Strayhorn. He'll pull it out and give it to Stinney. Five minutes to play in the game. VCU leading Cleveland State by three. Hicks goes. Can we play a little bit longer? This is a lot of fun. <laughs> 79 74 VCU. The Vikings attack. McFadden. Here's Ramsey. The end check in the corner. Back up top to Bryant. Bryant from three-point land. The Anchek, the offensive board, puts it in. How about that move by the Anchek? He went up and fought his way to that rebound and got it in. Now closed that deficit to three points. VCU 79-76. Allen getting it up the floor to Hicks. Now the Rams will set things up against the Cleveland State man for man. Inside, Strayhorn maneuvers, rejected by Mudd, and up the floor to the Mouse McFadden, and he lays it in over the rim. Mouse has scored 20, and Cleveland State takes a timeout. Three minutes and 59 seconds remaining in this game, and by the narrowest of margins, VCU leads. Playing a whale of a basketball game. 79 to 78 is the score with VCU leading by one and 3.59 to play. Again, an entertaining basketball game. I think both of these teams have played very well. They're going to represent themselves well during the year. Think about Mike Polio. You know, he had such a tough season last year here at VCU. Got off to such a horrendous start. And really, toward the end of the year, his club got much, much better. Looks like he's kind of picked up the... Uh, momentum from last year. I'll say, Larry, if they could win a close game last year, they were 5-10 and 10 in games decided by five points or less. But this year, they're 4-0 oh in their last four games. 
decided by six points or less. So the change is coming in those close games. Well, you know, when we talked to him earlier before the game, he was talking about the trip to Hawaii that he made when he played in the Silver Sword Classic. And he had mixed emotions about playing over there. He said, yeah, it's pretty good, but it's also bad. But he said, the good part is I had the chance to work out some of the problems I had with my young players. And he said, yeah, we lost the game over there to Vanderbilt, but we went on and, and played pretty decently after that. There was a question at the scorer's table, and I believe it is, did, uh, was that a call timeout by the teams, or was it a television timeout? And I believe the answer is, it is a Cleveland State timeout. Well, here we go with VCU attacking. Jack gets it over to Allen. And a foul on Ed Bryant. Reaching in, the senior from Dorchester, Massachusetts. Kevin McFadden's over here talking to Press Row. I think he's giving a running commentary on the game over here. With what the mouse has been through at Lower East Side, New York, this is a day at the beach playing in this game. He's probably coming over telling all of us about uh, the way Brian did it, the way that it was planned. He was going to slap it to him. He was going to go down and make the basket. Bruce Allen missing the front end, but Strayhorn there to get the rebound. Well, Strayhorn's played a good basketball game tonight for BCU. 340 to play. BCU nursing a one-point lead. Oh, Petway and Ramsey really having a battle here. Fouled by Ramsey. Slowly but surely, the Vikings are working into foul problems. Bradley has four, and now Clinton Ramsey picking up his fourth foul, and Warren Bradley will take a spot. I'll tell you, with a one-point lead by VCU right now, that 328 to Mike Polio must look like an eternity. Ramsey to the bench with four fouls. Or is he? Now they're going to take the ant check out and keep Ramsey in. Bruce Petwood. Puts it in. I'll tell you something that happened right there. Did you see Ed Bryant fall into the lane? If he had missed that shot, he would have gotten it over again because he violated the uh, free throw lane when the shooter had the ball. Petway's second opportunity is good. He's got 15. 81 78. VCU by three. 326. You see the clock at the portion of your score. VCU back into that 2 3 zone. And you bet they're going to concentrate on McFadden. They're going to know where he is all the time. McFadden's got it right there. Number 10, the mouse. Beating the inmate Ed Bryant. Hard to believe they list him as a sophomore. That has to be a topographic error. He plays as a seasoned veteran. Bryant driving. Rainbow missing. Stick back, no. Here is Bradley. No, they hit the deck. They reach for it, and Ramsey, now Allen, tipped out of bounds. Cleveland State ball. It's going to go to VCU. It is. Part of the wrong one. Take well, let's watch the flurry. <laughs> a lot of bodies on the floor. There goes another one. Everybody trying to reach and come up with a ball. Good move right here. Bruce Allen, there's the slap away. You see it going the other way. VCU's ball. Pressure by Cleveland State. They're trailing by three. They press up 40 or down 40. This is nothing unusual. You're just tuning into our game tonight. 2.30 left to play. 81-78 to score. VCU leading, Rams in possession. Well, they're going to have some finely conditioned athletes to be able to press like this all the time. Stinney with the driving lane. Quickly up the floor, here's Clinton Ramsey. And we've got a foul called on Derek McGee. He nearly came up with that ball. Mike Polio wants his people to come to him and uh, talk things over here. That's the fifth foul against Derek McGee, so Mike has some time to get the substitution in. He has one minute. 
is an interesting strategy. When you give a player who fouls out of a game, he has one minute to replace him. What he does is utilize that time to bring his team around and talk to them. If we can uh, look at the Cleveland State bench, Warren Bradley is down, and he may have to come out of the game. As you see, Alvin Hicks coming in. There's Bra there is a Bradley. And I think Larry, a muscle cramp in his leg. He was writhing in pain a moment ago. He's got a good view of the game. They're going to take Bradley out. Eric Mudd is in. Here's Ramsey. In and out. Steady the rebound. VCU by five and 2.10 to go. All right, you've got a five-point lead. You want to milk that 45-second shot clock? I think probably so. Will Cleveland State allow it? Right now, they're kind of being content with their back in the zone. Penway open. Boy, that's a big miss. It came with 30 seconds left on the shot clock. McFadden. Around the rim and in. The mouse with 22. And now it's a three-point lead for VCU. That is the most unorthodox-looking shot I have seen in college basketball. But boy, is he good. Can he stick it in the basket? Springhorn and Nana Allen. Better get it quick. The double team. Clear to Hicks, mid-floor, and up to Strayhorn. A minute 25 to play, BCU by three. Now you're on the clock. Now you're on the clock, you get your good shot. Make the green team come out and get you. Cleveland State back in that zone defense. They're trying to keep it away from the inside. Bryant trying to double team. Allen gets it to Strayhorn in the corner. Short, rebound, loose. Held ball, possession, Cleveland State. So a break for the Vikings with 62 seconds left. 83 to 80, VCU by three, and Cleveland State basketball. You remember when three-point lead used to be safe? It's not safe anymore. A guy from 19 feet, nine inches, gonna race that with one shot. Cleveland State's at right, is it two three-pointers? He's got the ball here. 2-3 zone by VCU. McFadden wheels in. The runner. In and out. No good. Petway has it. And they throw it away. McFadden is fouled by Strayhorn with 43 seconds to play. Did I talk about anticipation? It was almost after he let the shot go, he saw Strayhorn standing by himself over there, and it was almost like he looked up on the floor and said, that's where the pass is going to go. I'm going to get there before he does. Uncanny. Absolutely uncanny. Mike Polio is going to take a timeout here. We have 43 seconds remaining in this game and a timeout on the floor by the Rams. VCU trying to hang on. It's 83-80 Rams. Played the story for VCU and head coach Mike Polio. The Rams by three with 43 seconds to go. The timeout situation looks like this. Each team with two. We talked about the steals and how much Cleveland State relies on it. 11, and that is not close to their average of 16 a game. So you've got to give VCU credit for taking care of that basketball tonight against that Cleveland State press. And the Rams have come up with nine of their own. So Cleveland State and Mouse McFadden getting some free throws here. A chance to knife into that VCU lead with just 43 seconds to play. McFadden with a one and one. Bradley's back in the game now for Cleveland State. Missed the front end. McFadden just about came up with another steal. He's missed some key free throws, Bob. VCU leading by three. 41 seconds to go. Tip ball, steal for Cleveland State, and now a foul is called, and it's going to be on Alvin Robinson. Yeah. 
You just can never turn your back on Cleveland State. They're always going to be there. You saw McFadden slap that ball away after the missed free throw. It comes in. Look at this right here. There's Bryant. He picks it up, gets tripped by Robinson. He goes to the line now for a very important one and one. 37 seconds remaining and a 75% free shot shooter this year. That cuts it to two. 83, 81, 37 seconds left. Bryant ready again. The senior from Massachusetts in Cushing Academy. Drops it in. One point game. 37 seconds. Shot clock is off. Allen gets it into Stinney. Up the floor, here's Hicks. They beat mid floor and Stinney has it. All right, who are they going to foul? They got to go foul somebody. Strayhorn. Here's Hicks. Stinney. Good Allen. ball movement. Good ball movement. And Robinson is fouled by Eric Mudd. He's got one and one. They're not going to call an intentional foul. And Cleveland State's going to take a timeout. Mike Polio really upset that they didn't get the intentional foul, but it's going to be junior center Alvin Robinson at the free throw line with 10 seconds to play in this game. Now it's a one point lead. You have to keep in mind uh, several things now in these timeout huddles, Larry. Not only what do you do if he makes one, misses one, and all of those things, but also how does the three point shot affect the end of the game situation? Well, you know, Cleveland State has not been one of those teams this year that's utilized the three point shot much at all in their. Coming down here, if they make both of these free throws, then obviously they've got to consider going for that three-point play. If they don't, then the strategy changes. Then you want to try to get the ball to the shooter, maybe inside of that three-point line. You know, the three-point rule right here is where the strategy comes into play. That's why I said at halftime, I wonder what they're going to do, what the coaches are going to do with this strategy on the three-point rule. Because it changes everything. I mean, what do you want to do now? Do you want to go for the win, or do you want to go for the tie? That's what you get involved in. And Mike Polio discussing things. He's going to send Alvin Robinson to the free throw line. Alvin is a 69% free throw shooter this year. And he'll have the pressure on him to try to cement the VCU lead. It's 83-82 Rams. Boy, this has just been an outstanding college basketball game. You know, Kevin Mackey really has no chance if Robinson converts both of these free throws. But if he just makes one of them, then he's got to make the decision about going for the win or going for the time. Mike Polio will watch Alvin Robinson. DCU down six of the half. They've dominated the second half of play. Now trying to hang on to win the game. Here's the big one. If I'm Cleveland State, I put the ball in the hands of McFadden, and he gets it to the guy who's a good three-point shooter. Ten seconds to play. Missed it. Cleveland State bringing it up. It's a two-point lead. Cleveland State is going to go with it. Three seconds. Bryant tie ties the game. We've got overtime in Richmond. I thought for a moment, Larry, they were going to get it over midcourt and call timeout, but they elected to run the play, and Ed Bryant hit a runner to tie it up and send it into overtime. We get set for the extra period with the score. Cleveland State 84, VCU 84 at the end of regulation. Some of the best work in Cleveland State tied at 84. Larry Conley, the strategy of the two teams as we get set to tip it off. Well, obviously, we've got an 84-84 tie in the way they've played so far. I don't think much is going to change in this overtime period. I was really interested in what Kevin Mackey wanted to do that time when Ed Bryant had the basketball. You know, lots of times guys will take their time out. They say most times you don't want to do that. Put the pressure on the defense. 
Cleveland State wins the tip to start the overtime. Tied at 84. Thanks to Ed Bryant shot. Inside, here's Mud. Ransing now outside McFadden with it. There's that low pass. Rejection by Alvin Robinson. What a block. Bruce Allen. Working against Ed Bryant. Bob inside. Dangerous pass. Robinson picks it up and stint it. Out of the corner. VCU ball and a new 45-second shot clock. You get the feeling the baskets are coming real tough in this game. Nothing is easy. Bruce Pedway is in for VCU. Alvin Robinson, who made that magnificent block a moment ago, is out. One of the leading shot blockers in the Sun Belt Conference. Tied at 84. Stinney. Tip no. Rebound to VCU, or rather to Cleveland State, and coming out of there with it is Eric Mudd. Underneath McFadden, that's a goal 10 against him. Count the basket. The Mouse has scored 24. I wonder how many of those have been layups. Mike Polio's VCU Rams in overtime six times last year. They won only one. There are no T tonight against Cleveland State. Hicks, nice fit. So Pedway couldn't do anything with it against to the McFadden mismatch. Cleveland State leading by two. Inside, Pedway, nice pass from Stinney. Tips it off, no good. Flat foot and board for Eric Mullen. Tough break for Pedway. He had a nice shot. I'm going to tell you something. There's a lot of banging going on underneath that basket. A lot of grabbing, a lot of pushing. Vikings by two. McFadden working. TCU in that 1-3-1. One, one. Underneath, Mud fakes. And it's out of bounds. No, Pedway on the foul. Pedway got him underneath. So Pedway picks up personal number two. The end check coming in in just a moment. Watch Eric Mudd right here. Good dish to the inside. Gets the good fake. Pedway knew he was going to foul. He made sure he didn't get the ball up and toward the basket to get a three-point opportunity. Ray Salter's in the game for Cleveland State. And Ramsey goes out. Eric Mudd and now Alvin Robinson back in for VCU. Pedway will go to the pine. And Eric Mudd with a one-and-one -one opportunity. Mudd has scored nine today. Injured that wrist, tearing that ligament right before the Memphis State game in mid-November. Missing the free throw there. And VCU can tie with a two-pointer, take the lead with a three-pointer. And Cleveland State looks like he's going to change defense a little bit. Bryant with a little bit more pressure out front. More of a matchup zone. They're matching up out of it. Wherever VCU sets their offense, they're setting the zone matchup. Allen outside. Here's Hicks. But look how quick those guards are. Fadden and Bryant all over. VCU guards. Allen and Hicks will see these guys in their sleep tonight. They're going to play with a the walk there. Strayhorn, high archer, missed it. Steady takes it back out. VCU's trailing by two. 86-84 with 224 to play. We're in overtime in the Richmond Coliseum. Good idea by VCU there. Bring it back out, run your offense again. They got a good shot the last time, just didn't get it to drop. Steady with a tough shot. Just missed. Out of bounds, and a foul is called. You see which Warren one Bradley, I think. Yes. Bradley's going to get it. So Bradley picking up the foul on Clinton Ramsey right off the bench and back in. Viancheck also in for Cleveland State. That is the fifth foul on Warren Bradley. He's fouled out of the game with five points. So Alvin Robinson who missed the second shot of a one and one at the end of regulation with 10 seconds to go that would have given VCU the victory. Instead, Cleveland State tied. Now Robinson back at the line and hits this one. Bradley 
and McGee have fouled out. Bradley is definitely in foul trouble. He's gone. <laughs> <laughs> Robinson. Second shot. Bangs in good. Tied at 86. VCU again, back in that 2-3 zone. The end check getting it over to Ed Bryant. Underneath, Eric Mudd through a double team, puts it in. Good strong power move, Eric Mudd on the inside. Boy, that was a big basket for Cleveland State. 88-86. They're all big from here. Tell you no one, harm, no foul. Tell you one thing, these guys are really letting them play out there. And there's a foul called. You can just about bet it is a foul. And the end check with a steal. Took it all way off the dribble from Phil Stinnett. Now Cleveland State with the ball and a two-point lead. They should run some clock. what they're going to do. They're going to keep the ball moving. Keep it going around the perimeter of that zone defense. Now BCU's going to have to change defense. McFadden driving. The running back shot is good. So McFadden, who has scored 26 today, makes it a four-point Cleveland State advantage and under a minute to go in the overtime period. Stinney dumps it low. Robinson wasn't looking for the ball and fouls Clinton Ranson. Stinney got himself in trouble. He drove the baseline, got up in the air, and couldn't go anywhere with the basketball, and he threw it right into the hands of the Cleveland State defender. The end check going out of the game. Here's an interesting twist, Larry. They put Warren Bradley back in the game. <laughs> yeah, that'd be interesting to see. Now, let's see if we can work that out. Now, Bradley is coming over to the scores table. Our total is had that he fouled out. <laughs> That's what the discussion is there. And book shows five fouls. <laughs> Mike Coley says, that's a technical. <laughs> I don't think uh, Kevin Mackey knew that, uh, well, obviously he didn't know that Warren Bradley had five fouls. <laughs> now a timeout for VCU. A little breakdown in communication there, I think. 35 seconds remaining in the overtime period. The Cleveland State Vikings leading the VCU Rams 90 to 86. It was a shot by Ed Bryant with about two seconds to go in regulation that knotted the game and sent it into overtime. And here in the extra period, the Mouse is in a basket area. Mud with a nice move inside, and Cleveland State has a four point lead. This is a tough, experienced basketball team. They don't have a lot of old players on this club. Except for Ramsey, Mudd's a senior, uh, Clinton Ramsey's a senior. The rest of these guys, uh, basically, well, you look at Ed Bryant, he's a senior also. But they also, they've got a lot of good talent out there, and they're very quick. They've shown it tonight, and they've really put the pressure on VCU. They've got themselves a four-point lead now. These two free throws could make them up by six, and then VCU obviously has to start to consider the three-point play. And if you are thinking three-pointer, Bruce Allen is a good candidate. He's a 36 percenter from three-point territory this season. The BC Rams one and five in overtime last year. Seems to be continuing. And it, uh, unless they can turn it around here in 35 no, seconds. Yet. I mean, there's a little bit of time left in this basketball game. You've got 35 seconds. A lot of it's going to depend on what these free throws do right here. We could end up playing these last 35 seconds in about five minutes. So free throws for Cleveland State. And stepping up is going to be Clinton Ramsey. He scored 14 today, a one-on-one -one opportunity. 79% at the free throw line this year. 
ECU's got it. They've got to go quickly. Here's Pete Strayhorn. You see the clock. Top of your screen. No time for the passes. Get up. Get, get a good shot and go. Allen looking to get that three-pointer off. Here's Hicks. That's a two-pointer. Or is it? Not three. Three-pointer for Hicks. It looked like he had his foot on the line. But it counts as three. And it's 90-89. It's a one-point Cleveland State lead. Boy, I think the D.C. Rams got away with one that time, Larry Conley. It looked like Hicks on takeoff had his right foot on the three-point line. I was screened out from another player. I couldn't see over there to see where his foot actually was. 19 seconds remaining in the overtime period. And here's... See if... Watch his right foot. That's hard to tell from that angle right there. That's a little bit too high to see if his foot actually was on the line. I think it was behind the line, now that I take a look at it there. Take another look low. Let's see. That line disappears on us with that angle. Yeah, you can't see from right there. Bianchik trying to make the valiant effort to get over and block the shot. But nonetheless, Kevin Mackey's troops now with a one-point lead in the ball. And 19 points. seconds to play. Get the ball, get the ball up the court.